出す命の歌消えない心の傷目視野を求め続けたあの日の夜 Welcome back y'all this is Anime Degens episode 86 and we got a fun little first look for uh for everyone today uh we're gonna be doing a first look on the anime called slayers so i hope y'all ready for that it's the old one but it, it's pretty decent i'd say um but before we get into all that good stuff uh just want to let y'all know best way to support us is to rate the podcast and tell your friends about us if you have any interesting topics or anything you'd like for us to look at shows or movies or anything like that just let us know on any of the socials or discord linktree.com slash anime dgens and with all that being said nom how you doing nom how you doing today i'm fucking tired i am I, I i am just exhausted this this week has been dragging on is this oh a Monday? man <laughs> it feels like it is <laughs> Um, no, luckily it's not though, because we do have Friday tomorrow. So, you know, that's always exciting, but yeah, no, it, it's just been a really long week. I'm ready for it to be over. I got, I, I got a bunch of shit I gotta do tomorrow though. I feel that. I know, I know the CEO of uh micro center <laughs> is got a tough, you know, sometimes. So, uh, I'll believe you on that front. Um, <laughs> really, really feel for that guy. Yeah. It, it, it's a it's a hard life for him so um y'all give y'all give it up for nom he's always over there dedicating his life to <laughs> micro center so that way y'all could have the great deals on pc parts so and I had bundles to actually too. like and, um, and bundles yeah we bundles got bundles too. Yep. I, was like, I actually had to like tear nom away from his computer screen while i go so we could like start recording because he was trying to buy <laughs> keycaps you know, not I wasn't trying to buy them either, but you know, hey, look, he was trying look, to buy you, them all. You're the one that started this whole thing, okay? We're just trying to put Luffy on our keyboard, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But yeah, uh, I guess uh, I guess let's get into some of the news. I guess before uh, before we get started on the actual. Uh, shit the people come here to listen to our bullshit hour so yeah for sure uh so five centimeters per second is actually getting a live action if you guys did not hear uh Ooh. it was announced a couple days ago so yeah that that could be pretty interesting because uh um like so I don't know if this has happened yet or not but like th this is obviously like a Shinkai Makoto film and um like you would think that your name would have gotten a live action first um which i mean they probably have honestly uh yes they they have i was gonna say it would it wouldn't make sense if your name didn't get one first but i i'm definitely excited <laughs> for this getting a live action too because uh like i feel like these kind of shows do pretty well in the live action scene so but uh have you okay. have you seen any shinkai films um i can't say that i have so Your name? i'm probably i can't say that i have well okay can't say that i have so i i am going to be doing a little bit of uh looking into things and checking some things out that's for gotcha. sure maybe maybe sometime in the future i think we haven't seen five centimeters per second on the podcast yet We've watched like a lot of the other Shinkai movies, so maybe we can like watch that sometime or another. See if you like that little bit of romance uh, with the supernatural <laughs> stuff. So um, we'll have to see. Yeah, but for a second piece of news, we got we have Fire Force season three. I know we've said this in the past, but um, just want to remind everyone that it's coming out in April twenty twenty five. I know Dan's pretty excited about this. He's been trying to get me to watch Fire Force for a long time. Something about Hinata, blah blah blah. Hinata clothes falling off. I don't know, um, but yeah. So <laughs> I, I guess a lot of people are happy about that. It sounds like a show I'm definitely gonna have to check out. <laughs> <clears throat> um, speaking about shows to check out, though, uh, Spice and Wolf remake is getting season two. It has actually been announced. 
Uh, I'm pretty pumped about that, actually, because I, I haven't seen the original one. I have no idea if the story um, is going to continue after what ended originally, and if that's how things ended this time, but... I'm excited to at least catch up on the rest of season one and, you know, see what happens next. Yeah, I do know that um, most of it was like a retelling or whatever of the first season or, you know, of Spice and Wolf, the OG version. But yeah. they did add <laughs> a, a new content. They had they added like a new arc or something or like new content um, that wasn't in the first uh, OG uh, Spice and Wolf. So... I would assume that the second season is um, more of the same new stuff. So, okay. But uh, yeah, I'm excited about that too. You can never have enough uh, hollow, <laughs> especially like the cute hollow nowadays. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but speaking <clears throat> of all that, uh, my happy marriage season two has been announced. Mm. Uh, it's been announced for a minute, but we actually got uh, a date. And it's going to be coming out in January 2025. So that means that winter season has just gotten better. We already had like Apothecary Diaries, Sakamoto Days, and a bunch of other shows coming out. And now we got My Happy Marriage coming back. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, My Happy Marriage was one of those underdogs of on Netflix uh, like a few seasons ago. So. Heck yeah. Um. <clears throat> For our next bit of news, we get our first look at Chopper from the One Piece live action. No, we don't get to see him for the first time in the anime. That happened a long time ago, guys. <laughs> We're talking yeah. about the live action, right? Yeah. So, uh, honestly, doesn't look that bad. Yeah. Um, but it's only a shot from the back, right? We're only seeing basically his hat and the antlers. He better not have human teeth. He better not have the sonic teeth. I swear <laughs> to God, he better not have the fucking sonic teeth. Yeah, I mean, considering what we do see, like, there's also, like, a video. Um, But, I mean, in the video, we only see, like, the his back <clears throat> as well, like, the back of his head or whatever. And, I mean, like, this actually looks pretty decent. Like, I'm happy with it so far. Uh, like Nam said... It just depends on how they go with the face. Like, surely they don't mess up the face since they made it look this good, you know, so far. So. Maybe they talked to Sega and they learned before making this movie or this uh, this season, you know. I, I would I would say that Oda would probably have a huge fit. He would probably die, honestly, if he's seen <laughs> please, like please don't say look that. like Sonic used to. <laughs> don't don't say that. Don't don't put something out there. I would right? probably we die need, too. We, I need, ain't we need Oda alive, okay? Stop jinxing it. Just stop. <laughs> All the One Piece fans would probably just die. <laughs> I know. That's why we need if you to see, stop. If they see Chopper like Sonic was at first, they would they would just like <laughs> Oh my god, Tyler, bro. We need to make it to the end of One Piece and you're I'll not helping stroke, my anxiety bro. right now. <laughs> but uh yeah. Oh. Speak, I guess moving on to uh better news, I guess. Um Simpa is a uh, Oda Kanoko is getting a continuation film next year. I'm pretty excited about this. I I was uh, I like the the um this season or whatever. So I was afraid they wouldn't get a, uh, you know, a second season. And uh, at least we're getting a some sort of finish or continuation, whatever they're going to do. I'm not sure, but um, it's going to come out next year. I think I've seen like February. So pretty excited about that. Heck yeah. Um, unfortunately, we got some sad news next. For all of you who were excited about the fan or uh, yeah the fan remake of Berserk, that is no longer happening. Uh, Studio Gaga, the rights holder, is basically saying with you know actual facts that uh, the fan studio had no permission to actually use the content and therefore were not allowed to distribute said content, even though it was free. They weren't they weren't cool with it. So that is no longer going to be happening. Yeah. 
if I recall correctly as well, um, the Studio Eclipse, uh, they actually put out a letter as well, or like a statement as well, saying that they was stopping the production um, because they, uh, because uh, Studio Gaga and them uh, didn't authorize and they, they wasn't going to and all that good stuff. So, um, so we'll never get to see the outcome of, you know, what could have been, even though it probably wasn't going to be that good. But, you know, we never know. And now we'll never know. <laughs> so, but... Speaking of all that, uh, all that's over. Uh, now we get into our first look at Slayers because that's all of our news. And like we just didn't have anything else to do this week. Uh, so we just decided to dig into our bagger request. And one of them being... Backlog. Yeah, we, we got a huge backlog, chat. We're sorry. I know, we, we know you guys have sent these requests probably long before I joined. <laughs> I'm going to work with Tyler. We're going to get this fixed for you guys. All right. So uh, get ready to send some new recommendations, though. Yeah. I mean, if y'all have any recommendations, uh, like Mom said, make sure you send them to us. We will get to them. I know that uh, it may be not ASAP, but we will eventually get to them. Uh, and this is one of them. This is coming from Ash from Simping for, for Senpai. I know that some of y'all know him. Uh, I've been a guest on his podcast a few times. He's been a guest on our podcast a few times. You know, I'm I'm a big fan of Ash. So when he recommends something like this anime, you know, we got to check it out. And he wanted us to check this out. So we are. And it's going to be Slayers. Um, I think it's also called D Slayers or Slayers. But this is a 1995 film. Uh, that was made by ENG Films Studio. And the Mal is going to be a 7.72. And it is based off of a light novel that has a 7.89 rating as well. And the first season is going to be 26 episodes. And I think that it's got like some prequels. And I think that it's got some sequel seasons slash movies as well. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, Slayers is a big thing from back in the day is what it seems like. Um, but we didn't yeah. do all that, so. Yeah, there's basically, like, the original. There was a more modern telling. There was films which actually adapted the books. Then there was original movies that followed after the books. And it, yeah. Then they tried, I think, rebooting it again not too long ago, like, in the 2012s i think it was or something like that um so it, it was it's been done quite a lot i don't know if it was like a newer story that they were trying to redo um but yeah yeah there's there's a lot to that whole whole mythos we'll say right that yeah. whole saga the whole slayer series so and uh you know I actually looked at uh, the studio ENG Films and uh, back in 1995, obviously, it looks like most of their stuff was back then, probably. And like most of the most of their work, I have no idea what they are. Um, so <laughs> it's mostly like Slayers is the only ones I really know. And that's just because, you know, Ash told us everything else kind of looks the same. So it's got that old, uh, old, uh, studio vibe you know what i mean so um, it's very it's very reminiscent of like a lot of 90s marketing and art yeah. styles for those kind of shows um, very one, very reminiscent yeah one thing that i would like to mention that you cannot find this on streaming services anymore like as far as like Crunchyroll, anything like that it used to be on funimation because this is like a funimation dub and stuff like that i'm pretty sure um, but thanks to the Crunchyroll merger, you know, we can no longer find that on Crunchyroll slash Funimation. So, uh, but you can buy it on YouTube. Uh, I think you can buy like the first season and like uh, other stuff for like 30 bucks or something like that. I forget. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's on like DVD and stuff as well. Uh, like most of the Funimation, like older stuff is. So, um, but yeah. I guess before we get going with this first look, I just want to read like a quick synopsis real quick. Um, 
and then we'll get into it. We'll get into our thoughts and stuff. So basically our synopsis is a powerful, uh, avaricious sorceress, Lena Inverse, travels around the world, stealing treasures from bandits who cross her path. Her latest victims, a band of thieves, wait in ambush in a forest, thirsting for revenge. When Lena is about to effortlessly pummel her would-be attackers, the swordsman Gory Gabriel suddenly announces his presence. Assuming Lena to be a damsel in distress, the foolish yet magnanimous man confronts the brigands in order to rescue her. After defeating them, the oblivious cavalier decides to escort Lena to Atlas City. Though not very keen on this ideal, she ends up accepting his offer. However, without realizing it, Lena has chanced upon a mighty magical item among her most recent spoils. Now two mysterious men are hunting the young magician and her self-proclaimed guardian to obtain this powerful object for apparently nefarious purposes. This way, they begin their adventure, one where the fate of the world itself may be at stake. And... That that's like a pretty good synopsis, honestly. And I've only watched uh to get this started, me myself, I only watched five episodes. I know Nam watched <laughs> a few more than me. Uh how many did you watch, Nam? I watched seven total. Okay. The so first seven. We did we figured we'd watch at least five to kind of get the vibe of this show since it was a two cower season. Um so I feel like I feel like both of us probably got the vibes of it enough to give it a good first look so um yeah so like i just want to ask like did we i know for myself i had no idea what this was um i didn't know this existed uh since i didn't like uh really watch anime back in my younger days or whatever (laughs) and i feel like maybe maybe if you watched anime back then you would have this on your radar kind of but since I didn't, uh, I didn't know anything about this until Ash recommended it to us. So did you ever hear about this? Did you know anything about this before, you know, we decided to do this? I had zero idea going into this. I just okay. thought of the of all the names that you had uh, given me that that one sounded the coolest. Yeah, we. We actually, I, I see a list of things like uh, we have like five or five or six uh, uh, suggestions from like uh, listeners, and I was like, which one do you want to do this week, Nam? And he's like, Slayers. Slayers sounds cool. I was like, bad. <laughs> I'm a very simple guy. All right. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, can't go wrong with name uh, name like Slayers, right? <laughs> it, it, hey it's not going wrong so far hell yeah um so since we never have heard of it or anything like that until we just like started watching it i say we got a pretty fresh uh fresh eyes to look on you know so like what was your first impressions of like when you was watching the first episode like what did you think about it Holy fuck, this is old. <laughs> it's, it's literally in the freaking, uh, what is it, the 4 by 3 aspect ratio thing, right? Yeah, yep. Is that what um, you call it? it? It was 4 by 3 and then it was also very, um, very clunky movements, right? <laughs> I'm, sure you, I'm sure you picked up on that too, but like, everything was just so... so Low and drawn out. My God, just speed it up a little bit. Come on, guys. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Um. But other than that, then they started getting into some of the other things too, like um, just how how like the magic works and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, you know what? I I can kind of get into this. This is it. It's pretty easy to follow along, you know. Okay. Yeah, um, so, like, when I first started watching it, I watched, like, the first episode, and, uh, I was just thinking to myself, like, okay, so this is gonna be, like, a episodic, uh, episodic, um, like, uh, type of film, you know, where it doesn't really have a story, it's just, like, 
they just do they just fight like people <laughs> slash monsters and just do stupid shit and try to be funny. Like that's what I thought it was gonna be. And you know, to some extent I am wrong because there is a like uh overarching story, but for the most part that's what they do every episode is they just do stupid shit, <laughs> um, fight things, uh, and try to be funny. So um I I did laugh quite a bit in the first episode. It's got that like old style humor going for it. Yeah. So like <clears throat> it reminded me a lot of like um Dragon Ball, you know, a Dragon Ball type show or something like that cuz it just it just had that type of humor in it, you know what I mean? Okay. I mean, yeah, I can definitely agree with that. It was I mean, despite how old it was, right? It was still, it was still pretty funny and stuff like that. Um, I'll, I'm really gonna touch up on a lot of that when we get to a certain part in our, in a yeah. review. Uh, speaking of like the the whole like animation stuff, uh, let's talk about that for a minute because that's like the main thing about this show. Obviously, being from 1995 is that it looks really old. And uh, like like I said before, it's in like the four by three aspect ratio, like the square box with the black uh, the black sides or whatever. Kind of like how I had to watch One Piece when I first started watching One Piece. <laughs> um, like that's how, that's how we had to watch it, you know? And yep. like, I just want to like, I think the, I think for the most part, like the animation didn't take away from it, right? Because it was done in that old style animation where like uh when the fights was happening, mm-hmm. we didn't actually see like the impact. We just seen like the 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 moment before and like then we seen like lights or like a sound effect or like a sword slashing or something like that, and then it just went away and then the people the outcome was there we didn't actually see any impacts you know it just the attack the like moment that it was heading towards them and then the outcome there was no impact so i don't think the animation took away from that because of the way they portrayed it i guess um yeah, no, I I think that the honestly, like the animation probably really helps it, if anything, just because, again, it was it was made for, you know, the 90s. Right. Yeah. And the 90s had a very distinct kind of style and flair to it that if it didn't have all of that, it would really detract from it, if anything. So, no, I, I personally think that. With how they did present the story, they couldn't have changed the pacing, and the animation allowed them to have that that pacing the way that they did. Yeah, and uh, I also want to say that I'm a big fan of like uh, like the the colors, like the dark color scheme or whatever of like the older um, animation and art style, you know. Uh, it reminds me of like uh, Madhouse, right? Like the older Madhouse stuff, which okay, I'm a big yeah. fan of. You know, like Black Lagoon. Um, you know, all that stuff. Like I'm yep. like a big fan of like that color, like art style type thing. And whenever we watch like older movie, um, older series like this, and like Dragon Ball and stuff like that, they always have like the darker themed like art style and colors. And I'm always a big fan of that, even though like. A lot of it looks like shit. You got like a lot of the uh, very minimal uh, backgrounds, you know, like mm-hmm. um, like there's not a lot of detail going on in the background. It's basically just like the character standing there and talking or doing whatever they're doing. And like there's not, not a lot going on in the background. If there is, it's very uh, like you don't see faces like like it looks like Pokemon shit, right? Like Pokemon uh, from back in the day. So. You you just see like tiny little like sticks or whatever, kinda. It's not that bad, but it's close. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't really pay too much t- attention to the background, but you know that was just me. Um, I was trying to take in more of like what was actually happening on the screen type thing, and yeah. 
you know, even though, again, like you were saying earlier, there wasn't like a lot of um, a lot of impact and stuff like that. There was still a lot of flashy animations and stuff like that. Definitely Especially very back seizure. in the day, I would assume, I would assume, you know, like that yeah. was like the way they did it back in the day. So, yeah, yeah, it was very, very. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Very seizure inducing. <laughs> back before people cared about having seizures while they were watching tv <laughs> i mean this is the best way i can put it though right because there's no other way to to best describe it ultimately back then it's like oh look at little johnny he's just over there flopping what's he doing is that for <laughs> you know i, I don't know uh, <clears throat> but i mean like I said, this every like when I first started watching this, like up until like episode five or whatever, it like not only did the animation like in the art style and stuff remind me like Dragon Balls, like I keep on going back to Dragon Ball because like that's the last thing I've watched from like that era, mm-hmm. and like you can literally tell that like that was the style back then. Because, like, everyone was doing it. Like, a lot of people was doing it. Um, Like, even the sound effects. You had a bunch of sound effects, and it literally reminded me of Dragon Ball 2. Like, it just, like, it, it just, it's just that style. It's like that, that 90s style sound effects, 90s style animation. Um, Like, it's just classic, you know? Like, it's just stuff oh, you yeah. find in almost any kind of anime series back from the 90s, so... Oh yeah, very much so. Um, but speaking of like uh, like the sound effects and all that, I like I said, I don't think anything really took away from this anime. Um, like I went into it knowing that it was in 1995. I went into it knowing that like that's what it was. So, and I don't really, it, it's not really a big deal for me. Uh, for a show to like look the greatest you know what i mean especially now if this show came out in like 2022 and looked like this then no like there's no reason (laughs) for that you know what i mean (laughs) yeah there'd be Uh, a lot of issues then no honestly like i said earlier everything about the aesthetic and and the the tone and the overall pacing of this show it it was really accented to by just everything as far as the animation and, and the sound effects. Very, very classic um, of the era and stuff like that, which I mean, I'm, they also had some pretty good um, lighting effects too and stuff like that. I mentioned, you know, seizure inducing, but <laughs> there was, there was quite a few times where, yeah, they did have very, very bright flashing lights that happen and stuff like that for, a variety of reasons and the light did change depending on what that reason was fireball light you know preparing a spell whatever the case may be so that was another thing too that i noticed and and really appreciated about the show yeah um also another thing i want to talk about is like the op kind of hit you know what i mean uh like i listened to the op like a few times and not gonna lie i kind of liked it i kind of enjoyed it uh the ed was kind of forgettable for me but like the opening it really it really gave me like that nostalgic feeling of like what we used to get you know what i mean (laughs) like the bangers uh from back in the day you know do you have any feelings like that too or like was they forgettable for you or no no it was very 90s over the top rock was definitely the theme of absolutely everything you know mid 90s late 90s it turned into hip-hop and rap so it it definitely struck with the mid 90s musical theme of everything and i don't know i guess i enjoyed them both like they they weren't bad. I just kind of let them play um, as I was watching and stuff like that, and I didn't really mind it. It wasn't bad. I I don't like the the intro monologue that she has. <laughs> um, Lena, yeah. she it, it's a little over the top considering just how far fetched and fabled it is. But you know, 
But what, isn't what good, Lena supposed to be over the top, though? I was going to say, what good protagonist is not? So no. I get it. I mean, I, I thought it fit, you know, um, which I mean, obviously, we're all here for like the banger, you know, not the not the monologue, you know, the 10 second monologue or whatever. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I actually watched this dubbed. I don't know. uh uh, I watched this most of the way dubbed. I watched uh, one episode subbed just to see how it went. Um, and like, I wish I could have watched more subbed, but since we was having to watch like on the seas, you know, um, it wasn't the best uh, subtitle was going on. And like every time I tried to airplay it to the TV, I didn't get any subtitles. So it was like either watch a four by three square on my phone, you know, with subtitles that wasn't the best or watch a four by three square on a 65 inch TV, you know, with it being dubbed. And so I chose to do the dub part because the dub wasn't that bad, actually. Um, I felt like they picked uh, picked a lot of characters. I mean, a lot of the voice actors and they fit the characters pretty well. I feel like Lena was the, uh, they had to nail that one, right? Because she's very outspoken and like she likes to yap basically. And, you know, Gory is like the dumb, the dumb, uh, uh, gullible, like not or whatever. So they have to, they have to match those, match that energy. You know, they got to find someone that can match that energy. I feel like they did with the dubbed and the subbed. I really like Lena's voice actor more. I feel like it was, um, it, it was like, I don't know. She, she knew how to like act like Lena's character better. It feels like, did you get a chance yeah, she, to watch it both or? No, I only watched it, um, dubbed. Okay. Um, but I will say that Lena's character definitely fit the role. Like, v Lena's English voice actor definitely fit the role very well. She came off very, very confident, um, snarky, bratty, stuff like that. <laughs> and, um, you know, really, really played a good cocky role as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, she just, she just does so good. Uh, and speaking of like Lena, do like, how, how did you feel about her being a protagonist? Do you think she's she, a like... shit protagonist? She's an anti-hero. <laughs> she's not fucking good at all. She's literally trying to rob the fucking village after taking down those bandits. Right. Which she only took them down. So that way she could steal their gold. And then there was the dragon. So they fucking destroyed the entire town to try and take down the dragon right and then she tried demanding the money from the villager <laughs> hold up let me let me cook real quick okay what <laughs> if what if like lena so lena reminds me of one person as soon as i seen her doing this bullshit i was like bro this is just nami this is straight up nami <laughs> <laughs> if Nami could use magic, this is Nami. <laughs> You're not wrong. All right. You're not. But you know what? I will say she's a lot more useful than fucking Guri. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. that stupid ass airhead. He is fucking dumb oh he's out there bro he's like way out there oh my god i couldn't believe half the shit like he is just straight like throwing heat the entire time just not getting a, a single fucking clue at all yeah and uh like the funny thing is is that like he like the 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 style of humor that's in this right is like um it's not really like uh like the humor you see nowadays it's more like they're making fun of each other type humor you know what i mean like 
Lena is making fun of him for being a dummy and like just being stupid. And uh, he is making fun of Lena for just being like not. Uh, <laughs> hang on, hang on. For being small and flat chested. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I was trying he to think called... of like nicer ways to put it, but might no, as well just no, say no. what he says. He literally saves her the first episode, and he's like, "Oh, I thought you were a babe. It's just a kid," and he's saying these things out loud where she can hear it. And he's like <laughs> saying how she's got literally nothing in the chest and stuff like that. Keep in mind, Lena's wearing like a big robe, and I would imagine that it's probably you know a little puffier in that area. Um, so. <laughs> He's literally going off about all of this, and then he finds out that he's she's like this world or at least like you know area famous sorceress <laughs> who's uber strong so yeah, that was uh oh my God, he's just so fucking stupid, yeah, I uh I was laughing like. Not going to lie, like, I was laughing quite a bit just because of his stupidness. Like, just watching him just do stupid shit, you know, and watching her, like, interact with him. Um, And I I guess that's part of the show because this is, like, a comedy. It has a comedy tag, and I think it's meant to be, like, a comedy show as well. Um, Like, it's it's obviously action-adventure, but it's got that comedy in there, too. And, like, I think that it found, like, a nice little balance of uh, of that because, like, I was chuckling every now and then just over stupid shit. Like I said, this is, like, the 90s humor, you know? Like, they they made it the point to, like, hit on the, the you know, Lena's, like, size and um her, how tall she was and how she didn't have no chest, you know, stuff like that. And, uh, like... Um, there was also something else. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, I can't remember. There, there was like they, they, they done like wordplay too. Like I'm pretty sure that the knight called uh Zell Goddess. I'm pretty sure he called him like Zell Dildo or something like that once. Uh, it wasn't <laughs> quite like that, but he did. That's, he did what say I heard. his name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> of course you would. <laughs> I'm like, bro, what is this dude saying over here? Um, they made speaking, a whole joke about that time of the month too, and he didn't even know what that uh, even meant. You know? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but speaking of Zelgadis, right? So we did get inter- introduced to a few villains, and one of those was Zelgadis Greyward. He was quite interesting, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I didn't really, so I'm glad I watched like five episodes because he wasn't portrayed as a villain at first. Um, And honestly, on the fifth episode, he's kind of not portrayed as a villain anymore either. Like he became a villain and then he saved her from his organization um, (laughs) and became her protector until she gives him back the statue i guess so i i don't know if i would call him a villain or not i i'm 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 confused about my uh so what he is right now so this is why i say villain because watching seven episodes it does appear that he is changing but how more or less, right? So he does appear to be helping them and he is fighting everyone off. Um <clears throat> and then one thing that I did get to learn about him, I don't know if they covered that, but he is a chimera. Yeah, they did say I was wondering what he like what he got turned into. We seen that uh Zoff. Uh, wait, is it Zoff or is it Rezo? Zoff uh, is the mummy man. So he, we see that Rezo turned him into, um, 
whatever the hell he is now, right? He's like got blue skin and he's got like, I guess, scales on him. I would assume. I'm not sure though what that is. But he turned him into something. And, uh, you know, from a normal human. So we also know that Zelgadas is, uh, trying to summon like the demon king or something, right? Yep. Like that's, that's why he wants this statue, this, uh, figurine thing is because he's trying to use it to summon the demon king or whatever. We don't really, I don't know if they tell us or the reason why he wants to summon a demon king, but we know that that's why he's like that villain or whatever. So. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and then also Zolf, right? Uh, the mummy man. And basically he was just, he was forced to kind of, uh, infiltrate that bandit camp. And he wasn't, you know, he's just like kind of like a innocent bystander that got blasted. <laughs> By Lena. She's good yeah. at that. <laughs> so he's wearing bandages pretty much the entire time uh, up until the end of episode seven. He does take them off again. <laughs> so hooray for him. Um, but he seems really weird because like there was the one scene, right, where they had captured Lena. She don't she no longer has her magic. They take her to the their encampment and basically as she's tied up and hanging from the ceiling he's getting ready to torture her and it's just a bunch of insults <laughs> like yeah. like he's literally calling out all of her physical um you know appearances and stuff like that in like a degrading way yeah all her sensitivities um about herself that's that's what he called torture. And I'm kind of glad that they did that over, like, the route that anime would have taken nowadays. Because, like, if this was presented in, like, a nowadays, uh, like, lot, you know, then, like, there would be probably some, like, SA type shit. Um, oh, for sure. Happening uh, as part of the torture. But, like... That, that's why I love like shows like this because they don't they don't think about going that way they they're just like how can we just do the stupidest shit possible and make it make it funny and that's just like the <laughs> basically insult her <laughs> yeah. while she's tied up <laughs> yeah they call it so, torture so that that was pretty fun and then we get to learn about um one last guy. One last villain, right? And this seems to be the big villain. And that's Rezo. So yeah. Rezo is the, I believe it was the Red Paladin or a Red Priest, as they call yeah. him. He's one of the five great priests <clears throat> or five great hands or something like that. I'm not sure what they called him. Uh, yeah, something like that. Basically, he's like one of the five most powerful people like in the kingdom, right? And yeah. so he comes out and at first, you know, having a name like the Red Priest, you would think, oh, OK, maybe he's a good guy. And come to find out that he's actually the one that's looking for the statue the most using Zolf and uh, Zal Goddess. Yeah, and so up to episode five, I just, like I had vibes that he was not who he said he was, who who he was, you know. Especially once we started seeing that he was affiliated with uh, Zelgadis, right? And so I didn't really never see him like as a villain yet, but I knew it was coming. You know what I mean? Like it just you could see it. So you could see it coming a mile away just yeah. based on like the dialogue and like all the stuff happening. So easily. Um, yeah. And they, they set him up to be a pretty like formidable foe. Right. Um, so up to where I'm at, they kind of like given us the reason for why he's doing what he's doing. Um, but they also have like a little encounter. I don't remember if it happens before episode seven, but um, 
he does rezo does actually encounter um zel goddess and lena as they escape from her captivity and you get to see a little bit of an encounter and just how strong he is too so that was pretty cool too kind of establishing like you know the hierarchy of power this early in the series giving us a good big bad to really look out for type thing yeah and then um <clears throat> kind of like establishing you know characters and and their future and backstory like there's one big thing about Zal goddess i don't want to necessarily tell you in case if you do want to continue on um but if you do continue on you find out in like the next episode or two okay and it does help explain actually a little bit more too and that's why i went seven episodes i felt with just going five episodes it really didn't help set up too much like it gave you a lot of mysteries right but it doesn't help finish establish more of like a goal as like the seven episodes did where now there's like more of a purpose there's a drive a couple things are a little bit more clearer and make more sense. Yeah, I, I understand that. I was looking um while we was like before when we first decided to watch this, I looked it up and I was like um to see where like the first arc ended or whatever. And it said episode 10. So I, I'm wondering if like, like this whole like uh Rezo Zel Goddess trying to get the statue to summon the Demon King, if that ends on episode ten or is like this whole season about that, it's just like different um I guess uh different like uh major scenarios events or whatever yeah. that uh delays like the big fight or whatever, you know what I mean? So because that's that's what uh that's what like older anime used to like to do, you know, they like to uh, take that one big thing and just keep delaying it, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, especially end. Dragon Ball. Yeah, so I I kind of have a feeling like this is going to do that as well. Um, But I mean, like, speaking of like that, I guess, let, let's talk about the pacing for just a second while we're speaking about like, uh, you know, uh, the episodes or whatever. And I thought that like the pacing was pretty good. Because, like, it kept me interested with, like, what happened each episode. Like, there wasn't really any dull moments. It was either, like, some kind of stupid funny humor, like the the old style humor, or it was, like, action on the, on the screen. And when I say action, I don't mean, like, great quality action. I mean, like, the 90s style action where we just see, like I said, the the action and then the outcome and not the actual impact because the impact always gets skipped and like, because they didn't really, I guess they didn't really, they couldn't really do it that well back then. I don't know. Uh, like, especially like studios like this, I guess, unless you're, you use a big name studio, maybe you just couldn't do action scenes very well. Maybe you didn't have the budget. I don't know. I was going to say probably like a combination of budget animation. Like typically that's usually what ends up being the deciding factor in those scenarios. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I thought that I thought it was paced pretty well. Like I didn't get bored. Um, like I didn't, I didn't, it didn't go so fast that I was confused, you know, like I never felt confused. I never felt bored. I, I feel like it's, it's just right. Like I said, take it take it with a grain of salt that like this is a ninety show and like this is what you're getting, you know what I mean? So it wasn't drawn out though. And I really I really enjoyed that. Uh what about you? Yeah. Yeah, no, the pacing was, was very well done. I think um ultimately I, I guess my biggest gripe would just be that it took as long as it did to establish itself. But at the same time, that really kind of worked in its favor because a lot of shows these days, they're going for that quick shock and off factor and flashy lights, um, you know, buzzwords and, and super fast pace. And you don't you don't always need that. Right. If you have a really good story and you have good comedy and like dialogue in between. 
it, it really helps out. And I think that's what, what really sticks out the most, I guess, about, I guess you could say these nineties animes and stuff like that. And, and shows from back then, they, they just, their pacing was a lot slower, but it was a lot more enjoyable at the same time too. Yeah. It wasn't like, <laughs> it wasn't like drawn out for like reaction shots and shit, you know? No. And like purposes like that. It was like, it was uh more slower that way they could like fit in like stupid shit, you know what I mean? Or like other like more enjoyable things. So it wasn't just like, oh, we gotta we gotta make this scene, we gotta make this episode like twenty minutes, but we only got like ten minutes worth of content, so we'll just throw in, you know, some reaction shots, you know. It's not that type of like slower pacing though, which I enjoyed. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> um Speaking of enjoying, who's your who's your favorite character, bro? In this so far, up to, up to seven episodes, five, <sighs> whatever. Who's who's your number one character? Your favorite character of the story so far? There, there's actually two, because it's so polarizing, and they're favorite for different reasons, right? Mm-hmm. Um, my first favorite is got to be Lena just because she does actually bring a lot of style and a lot of um character, right, to the show and stuff like that and without her like over the top cockiness and um you know, very very cowardly moments, I don't think that the show would really hit quite the same. You know, if it was like a typical shonen protagonist it doesn't land as well, right? But then as you take it to say um the comedy part, it's gotta be gory. <laughs> Cause he's so fucking dumb. It's so funny though. <laughs> <laughs> but me, I, I I agree with the Lena part. I think that she carries the show like a lot. Like, she, like, carries it by a lot. And uh, I think she's my favorite character. I don't know if I have a second one. Like, like you said, Gory, like, he he's, like, funny. Like, just because he's dumb. Like, he plays that dumb, I guess, blonde trope type shit, you know? And, um, but I just... This may be a stupid reason, a silly reason not to like him. But I don't like him because of his hair. Like his hair is like his hairstyle. I don't like his hairstyle. You know, it, it annoys me. That, okay, that is a really dumb reason to not like someone. <laughs> I mean, it's like so his hair is like in his face, and like it's always in his face, and it's like always in my way. I feel like I just don't like it, you know. So I don't know. Okay, but that's fair. I, I don't that's know. Fair. I guess back then, you know, I guess maybe. The, the, um, what was it? Uh, uh, shit. Like the, the, the thing was like blondes are dumb, right? I guess that was like a big thing back in like the older days, right? So I, I guess that's why they made it like that, maybe. I don't know. But I don't know. I just didn't like his hairstyle. I didn't like it in his face all the time. It just, it made me, uh, not mad, but it just annoyed me, I guess. I don't know why. <laughs> I have no idea why. <laughs> I just did. But, uh. Um, man, you really hating on him. Poor uh, Blondie. Damn. I mean, he's giving, he's really giving it to Lena, though, like that, you know? So somebody got to, like, hate on him back. So, <laughs> you know? Okay, uh, that's fair. I'll give you that one. <laughs> uh,. I guess I guess uh let's move into like the uh like the world, the setting, the world, the magic system, like all that stuff. Uh like yeah. um let's 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 talk about that for a minute. So what do you think? What do you think about like the magic system? We get we get like some a little bit of like a taste of how like the magic works and uh stuff like that, like the magic system in uh general. Like, do you yeah. think like that's kind of unique to this show? Do you think it's bad, unique, good, unique, uh, like simple? I, honestly, it doesn't feel very unique. 
Okay. For the simple fact that a lot of the things that they do and they kind of like present, it, it seems like it's based off of like other known tropes of magic and stuff like that, right? Like, like she's got to face a certain way to cast a spell. <laughs> she has to channel certain energies to do so and stuff like that. All of those things all lead into it, right? Like, um, uh, she's using spells so much that eventually she can't use it again. Right. Because Not there was, a, uh, right, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. She, or like, I think she touched an item and it disrupted her mana. Right. So she has to recharge her abilities and stuff like that. And she's also casting spells. So it seems like they took a, like a lot of, um, alchemy and stuff like that. And then really brought that forward. Right. Some might even say that it was uh, full metal, even. <laughs> uh, I, I want to say, though, before before you move past this a little bit, um, the the whole like face and north thing, right? Was that just when she was like uh, making the spell on like the uh, GM or whatever? Like making yeah. the, a magical item or that wasn't yeah. all the time, right? It was just that nope. moment, right? Because of the type of spell that she was casting. Okay. So that the type of spell, I'm pretty sure it was an enchantment spell. And that would probably require certain certain things, right, to happen. So that way it can actually play out properly. Okay. Yeah, I, me, myself, I didn't really, um, I, so like the whole like North, um, like Nam was saying, like that, that was like uh, a little bit out there, you know, but everything else, it didn't really seem to be like very complicated. It seemed like just like point and shoot type stuff. Um, but I mean, overall, like it wasn't like a horrible magic system or anything like that. It wasn't like too complicated to figure out. Like it wasn't really anything about it uh to figure out it was just like oh this is magic you know but certain magic you know can only be used a certain way and now like they run out of magic or whatever for whatever reason like we just i guess uh i guess it can kind of get pretty deep but me myself i didn't really see it get deep yet so I don't know if it got deeper in the two episodes that non watched. I think it has like potential to get like really complicated if they wanted to, but I doubt that they will. So, no, it doesn't seem like it. Um, but no, uh, kind of kind of touching up on another thing. <clears throat> so, in regards to like a lot of the magic and stuff like that, and how I mentioned alchemy. Um, one thing that a lot of people might remember hearing about is Philosopher's Stone. Yeah. And the first thing I thought was Full Metal Alchemist, right? Because, you know, that's the whole basis of that show. That show does not exist without a Philosopher's Stone. But then I started thinking, too, that obviously, like, it, it is a real thing, right? It was something that some people did believe that maybe they also used it themselves, and that was one of the more original ideas that the show kind of took into itself, right? To, like, really amplify magic, you would need something that would be able to amplify those powers, and the Philosopher's Stone is exactly that. So it would make sense, too, that, you know, that would also be something that is probably unique to this show and the way how it works as well. Yeah, I see that. Um, so, the, the, so what, what you're saying that they have like a philosopher's stone type thing in the show. Yeah. Yeah. They like blatantly call it philosopher's stone okay. and everything. Where, where, where was this at? Uh, it was when the Elric brothers were in the desert. Fuck no. Um <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Sorry, I was wrong anime. Um no, I think it was like episode six or episode oh, seven. Okay. They explain a little bit more too about the actual statue that he's I after. Um 
I was going to say, because I don't remember, like, um, there being, like, a philosopher stone type thing there, but you said it was, like, six or seven. I only you didn't five, see when so. the one guy turned his metal arm into a sword? No, no. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm thinking the wrong show again, my bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I can kind of see that happening in this, uh, this show, too, though. Um, like it would make sense, you know, especially if like people lose powers and um like they they use like items to like summon demon kings and like it only makes sense that you have an item like the philosopher's stone to like magnify your magic ability or whatever. So but. yeah. Um, <clears throat> no, in regards to that, though, honestly, like, as far as the whole world itself goes, right? Because, like, obviously, the magic is cool, uh, and you have, like, swords and spears and stuff. Like, you have melee combat. You don't really need to flesh that out. That's already simplistic enough. Um, but the actual world itself, right? I, you don't get to see too much of the world. But I think that they do a pretty good job of establishing just kind of how it's ultimately going to play out throughout the series, right? It's very medieval-like. There's, you know, the enchantments and stuff like that. Um, they try and sell all those goods and whatnot to a shopkeeper. He's delves in different things and stuff like that. So it really helps show that, like, there's probably a huge focus in the show on community. Um, and, you know, older, more simplistic building styles and stuff like that, more medieval style. It it probably has a lot of depth and history, too, that, that we could really delve into, I think. Yeah, and I just want to say, you, you mentioned, like, this shop or whatever, you know? I, I thought that was a really funny scene when he, like, looked at the blade and, like, he turned, um, like, <laughs> bloodlust or whatever. And, uh... Like the only thing that snapped him out of it was was his wife, and I, I thought that was really funny. <laughs> she he's like, "Get back in that shop now!" He's like, "I'm sorry." And he tosses the knife out of his hands and runs back inside. He's like, "That shop ain't working itself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna kick your ass." They didn't really say that, but that's pretty much what she was saying. Yeah, he's she like, might as well have. Yeah, she was, and he was just like, "I'm sorry. I'm getting back in the shop." You know, well, let me tell let, let me tell you though, nothing is scarier than a wife angry. All right, <laughs> I would. If you married, you'll know you you know exactly what I'm talking about. I I probably ain't getting married. I'm married to the anime, bro. <laughs> Keep it that way. Anime won't disappoint you. <laughs> anime anime does won't let you down. <laughs> anime just don't yell at me. So when I'm watching anime, <laughs> unless you're watching No Katan, No Katan will yell at you. Yeah, but that's fine. <laughs> no time's over, so uh Deer the Deer Club is disbanded forever. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, uh I thought the I thought the world as well was pretty simple. Like Nam said, it could it could get like really deep uh if it wanted to, but you know, with what we've seen so far, you know, kinda doubt it does. Um uh, if it does, like it's through dialogue and not by actual showing it, because, like I said before, like the background, uh, um, things that are shown in the background isn't very detailed. Like we're talking about, like a cluster of trees in the background to signify a forest. Uh, like if they're in a house, like it's usually like some kind of like uh wall and window, you know. So, um. But with that being said, like it could have potential, but it's probably not gonna happen. It's not gonna get real deep because they're just focused on like the comedy aspect. So, uh, but I guess if that's all we have to say about like the world building aspect and stuff like that, do you have anything else to add to like the world that we've seen so far? I feel like maybe maybe it gets better as like we we would have more things to add to it, like as the season goes, but especially like when they announced the demon King, I assume the demon King has to come, right? Like it just has to. So, 
maybe i mean they definitely yeah. helped establish like a history and stuff like that i don't know if they showed that part but like there was like a big battle between a demon and a, a god and things yeah. happen and stuff like that so it was like one of those things where i mean we have to get to it to really like see it and understand it appreciate it type thing yeah Ooh, excuse um, me. so i guess with that being said uh you know, I guess we'll kind of get into our, our like, final stuff, like, I final guess. Final thoughts. Yeah. Because, um, you know, we only watched five, seven episodes, so it's not a whole lot we can really talk about, except for, like, our first impressions, basically. And I feel like we've done a pretty good job about that. So, like, what what is, like, your final thoughts on this? Is there, like, anything that you really enjoyed? anything that you didn't really like about it like would we change anything anything <laughs> of that nature no honestly it was um despite it being old at first right um and keep in mind guys like i i love initial d i'll go back and i'll watch that again <laughs> no problem and if you've seen that one you know just how bad the animation can be in that one when it's not the driving parts because those are fucking awesome fuck you if you don't think otherwise <laughs> um also, guys, bully Tyler into watching it. He hasn't seen Initial <laughs> D yet. We need him on the uh, MF Ghost Train. Um, but uh, despite, again, the the making fun of it at first and whatnot about it being old, it it was really, really enjoyable. Honestly, I, I don't think that I would really change anything about it. Um, just a... Hey, Overall, I think that it's probably got a better chance than a lot of other animes do too when it comes to its comedy because it it doesn't lean too much into one thing and then drop it and then never revisit it again. Like they're constantly going back and forth with the banter, and a lot of it is the same jokes, maybe in a different retelling, but it's still funny each and every time. The action scenes are just as captivating, even though like it's very, very drawn out. Case in point, um, shopkeeper as he's chasing after him, Lena grabs on to Guri and he's holding on to or she's holding on to him. And just before the guy strikes, right, like he's he's this far away from them as he's striking, and then they finally decide to let go and, and she lets go and they split up. <laughs> so, you know, the the over the dramatics of it, even that is still enjoyable. I don't I don't think that honestly there would be anything that I would want changed about it. Yeah, and I like that you said I like that you called it banter because like that's that's the humor that's in this. It's like just banter. Like banter between the like uh Gurry <laughs> and um Lena and that that's what makes the show so funny. It's like when you have like um like two friends or whatever bantering with each other, like they know what you're sensitive about and they know how to like nitpick them spots, you know, and it's funny like to see the reactions. And I think that's, that's the type of humor we're talking about here. We're talking about like the reactionary, uh, like to banter humor. So, which I find like pretty funny. So, Oh yeah. Is there anything about it that you disliked aside from Guri. <laughs> from his hair. Uh, <coughs> <laughs> um, you know, like I, I definitely think that uh like the action, like that the the action scenes or whatever, it could have been done better. But like I said, budget budget and stuff like that probably played a factor into it. I don't really care for like the whole uh action scenes where um like a, a sword swings or whatever and we don't really see the impact you know we just see like the outcome it's just like uh when two sword fighters like go past each other you know how like the older styles do they go past each other and then one of them just falls over or whatever like i don't mm -hmm. really care for that like i want to see like choreography you know i want to see like windbreaker <laughs> you know i want to see you know naruto shit um like i want to see stuff like that i want to see cool uh cool things you know and that leads me to like uh the next thing is like i really think this would work well in like a remake kind of thing in like modern day anime right because like i feel like that um 
like the fantasy adventure with the humor and stuff like that is really starting to come out and we're starting to see like a lot more of that nowadays right and so oh, yeah like we had like delicious and dungeon you know we had like uh Furin, like we had like so many different like types of um adventure anime come out um that done really well uh because like it wasn't like the isekai you know we have like a lot of isekais that like do this type type of shit but i think this would do well nowadays if they like redone it and actually like animated it maybe maybe have like the old style madhouse like animation not really like Mm -hmm. the shiny glossy like new animation style keep it keep it like Keep it kind of like reminiscent of what it used to be, but actually animate the fights and shit better. I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know. See, I think that if they are going to update it, right, I wouldn't necessarily go Madhouse. I'd probably do maybe like the, the studio that's doing Spice and Wolf remake, right? Unless that is um, Madhouse. No, it's not Madhouse. Uh, so you want the like the uh, the... I, I still want like a slower aesthetic to really help accentuate like just how well the story really progressed and stuff like that. Right. Cause if you go, if you start to do something that's a little bit more fast paced or like some of these other studios that are doing a lot of the shonens, they're going to speed things up. Things are going to be a little over the top, I feel. And I wouldn't want that. Right. I would much rather it be something where, you know, they're focusing more on like the characters themselves as opposed to just the oh, action yeah. scenes. Yeah. So like the, the characters like drive this show, like there's no doubt about it, you know, like the characters and their humor and like, like now I'm said the banter, like that drives the show. But I do think like the action scenes and the other, the secondary parts that are there, I think that they could be better and I like that that's that's what I think would benefit from a like a newer like version if they actually like put money into it you know like obviously if you make a newer version and you don't put money into it you're gonna come out with something like my home hero you know which doesn't look the best you know and doesn't like isn't animated the best I was just saying I, I would I want them to whatever studio would get it, I want them to keep like the darker color themed. Like, you know what I mean? Like the, not the, not the like bright, um, uh, I gotcha. poppy, um, theme, you know what I mean? Like, I want the darker color theme kind of like it is now, you know? Um, uh, so, but I, I do think it would do well. Um, and but, I'm pretty sure you said you think it would do well too as a remake. This, so. Yeah, I think that this show would just absolutely hit big time, especially with um, you know, people of our generation, right? People that are like in their 30s and stuff like that. Like, if I was to recommend this show to anyone, it would be someone who grew up in my generation that watched cartoons or anime and still watches it, right? This is literally the stuff that they would just absolutely go nuts over. Yeah. And I I agree. I I highly enjoy it. To be fair, I'm probably not going to continue watching it. There's <laughs> so many other things that I'm watching. If I'm not mistaken, I believe the movies do kind of like shorten things up and cover all of it. So I'm still probably going to do that just, you know, because it's a two hour sitting instead of like 26 times 20. Yeah. (laughs) So what do they got like (sighs) compilation movies or something like that? I guess they got movies that adapt. The first one adapts the first and third novel. The second movie adapts the second, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh novel. And then they have two other movies that are. um like original stories okay yeah um i definitely agree with you on like that part about recommending it to like um our like age group you know especially like people that used to watch uh like anime and stuff uh 
like if you you if you're like a fan of like the old school like Dragon Ball, um, like, he means Dragon Ball, not Dragon Ball Z. Okay, yeah, like Dragon Just to Ball. Just clarify. Um, like if you don't care about the 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 screen being a four by three uh aspect ratio, like you don't care that it's like minimalistic uh animation and like artwork and stuff like that. You know, you don't care about any of that, but you want to kind of like laugh at like um uh, funny slash unfunny humor that is funny. You know, like. I, I think you would enjoy this show. So I, I enjoyed it. And honestly, like I may not watch, like I may not go out of my way to watch like every episode of this, like as soon as possible. But this is one of those things like with Dragon Ball, you know, I've been working on Dragon Ball for a long time now, but like I'll, I'll watch the dub as I'm like, uh, when I don't have nothing else to do, I'll just turn the dubbed on. Like when I'm playing RuneScape or something, I'll turn the dubbed on that way I can watch the dub, you know, kind of while I'm doing RuneScape shit, you know, or like when I'm going to bed, like I turn something on like Dragon Ball dubbed sometimes when I'm not feeling like watching anything else. I feel like this is the type of show that I could do that with. I could turn the dubbed on and just relax and watch like them just do stupid shit. Just like I can watch Dragon Ball, you know, you, you can watch Goku beat up people, you know, like <laughs> it's the want. same thing. The dubbed is good. The subbed, I, I enjoyed. I enjoyed Lena's voice actor better on the sub, but I feel like the dubbed is just as good. You know, it's good enough for me. That's that's how I would watch it. I would just put it on and watch it dubbed. The only thing I wish, I wished it I had, um, I wish it was on like Crunchyroll. You know, that way I didn't have to, you know, deal with, uh, you know, having to watch it on the seas because that is annoying. You know, it's very annoying. Um, especially when you go to watch the next episode or something like that. So, uh, but like, so I guess to round this out, round that little, uh, first look of Slayers out, uh, Nam already said he was not going to continue watching. Uh, like he, he might continue watching the movies. I'll probably continue watching occasionally, you know, when I don't feel like watching anything else and want to laugh a little bit. This is like kind of funny, but to end it out, let's, uh, let's give out like, uh, first look ratings, you know, like this isn't like what we think, you know, this is what we think it would be if we watched the whole thing or whatever, right? Like our projected ratings. And I guess I'll go ahead and start. I think that I would put this in like the, um, Probably like the six point five seven range. I feel like it would hit around there. Um, I don't. I really don't think that it could hit an eight for me. Uh, just because like, you know, it, it's that type of anime where, like, it's like shonen y, you know, and I just don't think that it would hit like an eight. But I don't think it could be lower than a six. So I think it would hit somewhere around six point five or seven for me. Uh, when I do finally continue watching it all, so. Okay. Um, honestly, I think I'm going to give it an eight. <clears throat> really? I think that realistically, if I watched the show back then and got a better look at it, it could probably even balloon higher. Um, because at the, you know, magic is a big thing that I'm, I'm like really all about. If I ever do an Elder Scrolls game, I usually do Mage. It's not going to change with Elder Scrolls 6 if it ever does come out. I know, guys, it's mythical. But, you know, same thing with this world. It was a very, very mythical world. They had dragons, for crying out loud, and the dragon actually stepped over the people, Lena and Guri, so as to not step on them. <laughs> Which was just, like, what? Um... But no, uh, everything about it was just, it was really, really good, really well done. And yeah, no, I, it definitely deserves an eight, I feel. Okay. And that was pretty surprising. Uh, I, I thought you was going to give it a pretty low score considering that you you probably wasn't going to watch it. So, or unless you watch the movies <coughs> or whatever. So, no, no. I mean, it, it's got a really interesting concept. It's just there's, 
there's way too much stuff to do way too little time in a day right yeah. if i get if i had like the next week on vacation i might have taken that time to to watch it but you know those displays aren't going to put themselves up <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it, it's a it's a rough life being ceo um so i <laughs> If only he was like uh, the actual uh, like president or whatever, you know, then he wouldn't have to do all that bullshit uh, <laughs> grunt work. So, um, but until then, you know, Nom's Nom's got limited time. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I guess that concludes our first look at Slayers. Like I said. Uh, like we said earlier, if you have anything that you want us to like check out, like first look or like some movies you want us to watch or anything like that, you know, feel free to let us know. You can send us an email if you don't like socials or you can just like DM me on any social media. Um, like we actually have a form um, in the description of our podcast episode that you can click on a Google form and you can like type stuff in there or uh, you can, you know, DM me on Discord or like put it in Discord, one of our channels. We have a channel for this. So, um, so linktree.com slash anime degens as always. And we just want to say we are also doing, um, watch parties every week now. We're doing something special though, uh, for October. For the month of October, we're doing spooky season watch parties. So we're going to be doing every Friday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7.30 Central. We're going to be watching a spooky anime that is voted on by the Discord. So, And that'll be like a, the whole month of October. We're going to be watching spooky shit um, just to get into the spooky vibes. You know what I mean? So uh, then we'll go back to our regular... Uh, Voting. regularly scheduled programs yeah we'll go back to that maybe maybe during christmas time you know maybe we'll watch some christmas shit you know what i mean like december so we'll, we'll have to see um but other than that that's all we got for this one and uh next week uh like we said on the rundown there will be no rundown next week because like we don't have any <clears throat> shows airing and one piece has got a special so for DJ next week, we're, we're going to be introducing our fall rundown. So make sure y'all come out next week as well and give us a listen and see what we're going to be talking about weekly on the rundown. So we're going to be announcing that. And I guess we'll see you on Thursday next week. Peace. Later.